Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I'm going to examine the possibility of putting an extra large starship, a 12 meter diameter starship, on top of Super Heavy. Uh, this is like the ITS sized starship, but not with an ITS sized first stage. Now you might be thinking, why? Why would you do this? Well. The reason is to carry large hydrogen tanks. It's practically the only payload that Starship really wouldn't have a large enough cargo bay to carry given its cargo capacity. In other words, it can carry like more than 100 tons to orbit, let's say 150 or whatever. Uh, everything else is dense enough that the existing cargo bay with the 9 meter Starship would do a fine job fitting it. You don't really need anything too much larger. But with hydrogen, in order to fuel an NTP ship, uh, well, we need more space because hydrogen is not very dense. I mean, of course, if you were just carrying pure hydrogen, uh, sorry, oxygen gas, uh, that would also be a problem. But let's just do a comparison between the original Starship and so I've got this Starship body cargo. I decided to go with uh, what you got, white textures here, sort of in mild imitation of the ITS ship that was proposed in 2016 I think but you can see the size of the hydrogen hydrogen tank and this is just a 108 ton hydrogen tank so yeah it's just not going to fit in any way shape or form like that and of course if we made it longer and thinner it'd, it'd be a lot longer actually the increasing diameter gives you a lot more volume uh, as it turns out now, as far as the fuel capacity goes, uh, this ITS ship, it, it, the fuel segment is shorter and the cargo segment is longer. And overall, it's a bit longer. Let me just move this up here. But it's not as long as its diameter would justify. So what it shapes out to be, of course, this is going to have a larger dry mass, right? That's the downside of this. You can't just scale it up. You're going to end up with more mass. So the amount of dry mass that this has extra is a factor of about 1.5 or 50 percent more and the way we've managed that is it's 1.33 times uh, the diameter so that's in two dimensions and then in length it's not 1.33 times if it was 1.33 times in all dimensions then it would be uh, more than 50 percent increase in mass so we wanted to keep it to 50 percent increase in mass and this is uh, about the size so it's fatter aspect ratio wise than the original one. You can sort of see that. Uh, which means maybe it'll be easier to land on the moon and everything once we put the landing legs on. Uh, there's less tipping over. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if we want to land on the moon. It, well, it is a cargo version. We'll have to see. So we have the hydrogen tank and we have the increased uh, dry mass and that goes for the fins as well. The fins also have an increased dry mass I don't have the grid fins for the super heavy in here right now. There's still 1.12 and I'm still building this install uh, If we take a look at uh, the dry mass here uh, We've got the 9 engine version and we've got the fuel that the 9 engine version could take So we're talking about 1,500 uh, tons of fuel here so that's a lot and if we include the cargo, which is 108 tons, we get uh, 274 tons. So if we remove the cargo, 166 tons dry. So I think that's more than, you know, more than sufficient as far as estimating this particular thing. I would hope it'd be less, but anyway, 166.8 tons dry. Now, then the question for us is, can Super Heavy carry it? Can this make orbit with its payload? Obviously, with the same engines, we're not expecting as much payload to orbit as Starship would have. We're, we're just burdened by the fact that our payload is very, very not dense. What, what is not dense, anyway? Anyway, it's not dense, so we need to have a Starship that can do with that, deal with that, and here we are. Uh, I've made the bottom of it flat like this. Of course, we could have had a sort of conic section to smooth out the lines between the Starship and the Super Heavy, but since CSD 100, they went out of the way to have sort of a straight segment, I figured maybe this is good for aerodynamics. I don't know. So we'll, we'll assume that it's good for aerodynamics to have it flat here. That's better on the way down anyway. Having a conic segment in the back is not necessarily 
the best for aerodynamics but uh, basically the aperture here is still the nine meter aperture in other words it's still the same back end as the regular starship that would mate with super heavy it's just that now we've got extra bits around it so that is the idea and we are here to test whether it can make orbit with 108 tons first that is the goal and then after that we'll see one reason for this aside from starship is that I want to use this stage on other things so it'll be the same hydrogen stage eventually that I develop and we'll develop it for Starship, for SLS, and for my Kasei rocket. So all three will get the same hydrogen stage and the same refueling system. So that is the goal and let us see how this works. As far as return is concerned by the way I haven't even taken a look at the aerodynamics of it for return so uh, first I'm gonna see whether the size is right and then we'll proceed. But it is sort of ridiculous looking. We certainly want to retract the fins. You know, the wiring at pad 39B isn't exactly the greatest <laughs> for for this launch. But anyway, all right. So throttle up, SAS on, ignition, and launch. Ah, the nice rumble that we get from real plumes. Well, it's quieter now. Very low thrust weight ratio like this. And then there's drag. Now why not upscale super heavy? Oh, we're going sideways. Um, this way. Uh, why not upscale super heavy as well? Well, I thought this would be an interesting curiosity, let's face it. This is one of those horrible designs that you see on Twitter. But keep an eye on the pitch authority as we go up. We do have the tw 20 outer engines locked. It's only the center engine skimbling. So we're using a lot of the gimbal range, but it's not critical or anything. We do have to reserve fuel as well. Starship with the nine engines, even like this, still has a thrust weight ratio of one, so that part is not too bad. I mean, right now, Delta V wise, assuming it's reading the right Delta V, I was thinking it wasn't reading the right Delta V because we didn't have the payload being the root part, but maybe it is reading the right Delta V, in which case we can carry more than this. But we do have to reserve fuel here for Super Heavy's return. I'm gonna reserve 18 seconds for safety's sake and separate the ignition. Yeah, I'm guessing, okay, 6,400, so it wasn't quite as good as it was making it out to be. All right, so it's still reasonably tight, we'll have to see. If it does have a little bit of margin that's good, we could probably add, we need to add some stuff to the tank. Just having a bare bones hydrogen tank is probably not good enough. We might want some RCS and the control system docking port and that sort of thing. There is the added uh, annoyance that it can't de deliver this to high orbit, none of them can, none of the rockets, so the NTP ship will have to get into a low orbit first and then pick up the fuel. There's more thinking about its return than the initial deployment. Okay, well, switching off some engines. So now we just have the vacuum engines. I left a tiny bit of gimbal on the vacuum engines, 10%, just in case. I guess we'll try roll too. This is technically a new model, so I have to check on the RCS. It looks like the RCS is working fine. Insulation doesn't make the body as shiny as ITS was intended to be. 
but it is what it is. Of course I cheated and we still have technically the little window grids and such because I didn't want to make a whole new thing. I'd have to fill those in. Okay. And that's an orbit, 271 by 167. Basically just made it. So, and we even did the shutdown of the sea level engine. So this is not too far off from what it can do. Uh, as far as return goes, uh, this might be it, you know. Uh, if we uh, decouple, I don't know if we can, okay. Let's check that the payload can actually get out of the cargo bay. That's sort of imp uh it's reluctant, it's reluctant. Come on, it's a 12 meter bay. <laughs> You're a 10 meter stage. Yeah, I mean a 10 meter tank. That thing is a 10 meter tank. Should be able to get out. Okay, but yeah, we don't have enough Delta V. We'll have to optimize the trajectory a little bit. Then we'll have enough Delta V to come back and land, hopefully. Um, thrust weight ratio wasn't too bad. We might be able to fit more fuel in this. Actually, the the volume available here is more than we're using. We're currently using about 1,700, well, 1 1.7 million liters, and we have 2.2 million liters available. So. There's some room there for expansion of the tanks if we want to, but um, really, can we can we not get that thing out? I have to push forward and down at the same time. Of course, if it has its own independent propulsion, that's a separate thing. But, alright, we can get it out. And right now our mass is 190 tons with the fuel that we have. So this is a hefty thing. So, anyway, that seems successful. Actually, I was thinking I would have to tweak something, but this is about it. I don't think I can say too much more than this. So, the goal of this is simply to carry hydrogen tanks up. That's it. And you can tell me what you think about it, but I will develop a stage based on that hydrogen tank so that it'll go in this, it'll go on SLS, and it'll go on Kasei. So, we'll have those. In fact, the same size tank should be able to be launched on Saturn V. That, what, that's what really precipitated this, the video on the hydrogen stage for Saturn V, same size tank. So yeah, we can do it for all of them and that will be coming up soon. So with this attempt at a 12 meter starship, uh, barely sort of making it and really overburdening Super Heavy, though we did reserve a fair amount of fuel for Super Heavy to get back considering it really didn't get as far out as it normally would. So that's positive. Anyway, we've done all we can. So we've tested this premise and I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.